Hey guys, it's Mr. Penguin Panda, and this time I'm going to give you 12 tips and tricks on designing your Stardew Valley farm and house, including some new 1.5 features. If you look at dozens of farm tour videos on YouTube or screenshots on all kinds of social media, you might be thinking, wow, I want my farm to look just as pretty. And I wouldn't consider myself a great artist, but I don't think that you need to be one to achieve similar results if you follow some of my tips. And I'll try to alternate between very general tips and tools you can use and more specific ones. So first of all, a quick rundown on where you can get all kinds of furniture or decorations. The furniture catalog can give you limitless access to most furniture in the game and you can buy it for 200,000 gold from Robin's shop. The catalog from the general store does the same for wallpapers and floor decorations for 50,000 gold. Otherwise, all the catalog items can randomly appear in their respective stores every day. But for all other items, you can buy or trade them from various NPCs or craft them. Or you can get them as rewards from hard events, the crane game or the museum. Or you can get them from progressing the story, certain achievements, finishing secret notes and some new secret 1.5 fishing spots. And finally, you can also buy many of them from festivals, especially the night market. And 1.5 even added new shops for some of the festivals like the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies, in case you didn't know. But for a comprehensive list, I recommend looking into stardewvalleywiki.com slash furniture. And regarding both catalogs, if you want some convenience and don't mind mods, use something like the CGB item spawner instead. It actually has a search and filter function versus the very sluggish interface of the catalogs. Of course, you have to decide for yourself if you think that's cheating or too tempting to spawn other items as well. In the end, it's all about having fun, no matter how you decide to play the game. Now let's get into the actual tips and tricks, but of course remember that some of them are just my opinion of what I think is helpful or aesthetically pleasing. Tip number one, take screenshots of your farm regularly. Not only is this a good way to track the progress of your farm and to make a before and after to share on social media, but it also just helps to zoom out and look at it from a different angle once in a while. It's a common thing to do for any artistic activity. Just remember that a farm that might look good zoomed out doesn't have to look good from up close. For example, you can draw patterns or pictures with paths and other items that look great in screenshots. Even back before the game was released, Concerned Ape himself made some fun art with this. But from up close it might not be what you imagine, so just keep this in mind. And just two more small things. First, on PC you can enable zoom buttons to quickly zoom in and out to get a better view of your farm or your house. This is also useful for other activities like mining. Secondly, you can type slash map screenshot into the chat so you don't have to go to the option menu every time. By the way, if you don't know how to take a screenshot or where to find it, there's an official forum post explaining how to do it on every platform which I'll link in the description down below. Tip number 3. Use paths or fences to create small spaces like gardens or parks. This will really help to organize your farm and fill in empty spaces. You don't even have to fully fence spaces in, just a small indent can already make it look like a separate place. You can also do this inside your farmhouse or sheds, and in that case there's also the option of using the new floor dividers, tables or fish tanks. Fill these newly created spaces with furniture, crops, light sources or even garden pots. Also, don't be afraid to mix and match different fence types and floorings. I personally really like to mix hardwood fences with standard wood fences and wooden floors with wooden paths. Tip number 3. You can move the greenhouse and the shipping bin. It's a new 1.5 feature and it'll really help you remove some restrictions on how you can design your farm. Generally, don't be afraid to move buildings around to see how it looks like. Remember, it doesn't cost any gold. You can move buildings into an unused corner to kinda swap them around or to later decide where you want to place them. And if Robin's shop is unavailable, you can always go to the wizard's tower if you've unlocked his buildings. Tip number 4. Fill in the emptiness around the spaces you created with trees, fruit trees, plants and garden pots or other furniture. But in the case of fruit trees, you have to do it in the right order. You can't plant them if there's anything in the 8 tiles around them, and this also includes other fruit trees and the surroundings. So you have to plant them first, let them grow, and then place your paths or fences around them. Tip number 5. If you didn't know, in 1.5 you can paint some buildings if they're at a certain upgrade level. Admittedly, I haven't used it much yet, but I just wanted to mention it. 
I think it's kinda difficult to find good colors, but maybe some of you have good tips for that in the comments. Tip number 6. Place patches of grass around trees, next to paths and so on. You can place grass starters everywhere, even inside buildings or in untillable spots or even the mines, but they won't spread. Just keep in mind that the grass will disappear when the season changes from fall to winter even inside buildings. Small tip, during the winter you can actually place grass without it disappearing, even though it won't spread until spring arrives. Once again a matter of taste, but you can also overdo this. Some people prefer a less crowded looking farm. Tip number 7. Take some inspiration. If there's one thing I learned from playing games, creating content, art and even coding, it's to not try to reinvent the wheel every time. If that's fun to you though, then you do you, but for the best results, look for cool ideas from other farms, even other games. You could for example, recreate a town hall from Animal Crossing. Think of things in real life, movies or other media, just type things into Google. Places like tea shops, gardens, restaurants, aquariums and so on. Try to recreate them with the limited tools in Stardew Valley and keep reiterating until you're happy and have something that resembles what you imagined. Sometimes I also like to just build around whatever happened to be there. A meteor, a giant crop, a mushroom tree or a hastily planted field of crops from a week ago. And fitting to that guys, tell me your favorite theme in the comments down below. For example, magical forest, Japanese tea shop or spaceship room. I'd love to hear that. I'll make a second video featuring my favorite themes. You can also join my new Discord server and post your ideas there. Personally, I always try to imagine some kind of story or scenario. You enter an abandoned house in the forest, only to be shocked by some scientists there experimenting on slimes. After leaving your forest, you spot a greenhouse with giant crops outside and magical juniors dancing around. If you want to see more of that, make sure to check out my farm tour. But now let's continue with tip number 8. This might seem obvious to some, place furniture outside. This is another new 1.5 feature and there might still be people who don't know about this. You can't place every type of furniture outside, but especially benches, tables, chairs and all the plants can really make your farm look far better. You can also put many non-furniture items on tables or end tables, which gives it a little bit more life, especially if you're going for a specific theme. Especially some artifacts, plants, food and drinks look really appealing in my opinion. For example, use green tea, coffee and some food to make a tea shop, restaurant or bar. If you're into cheating, then some of the one-time quest items are also nice. Tip number 9. Use all the different types of buildings to give your farm some variety. This includes the mill, fish ponds, additional shipping bins and especially the farmhand cabins which all have a very unique look and can even be upgraded if you play multiplayer. The fish pond's colors can also change for certain fish types like lava eels or super cucumbers. Unimo huts also look amazing besides the utility and they change colors every season. And if you put gems or minerals into a hut, you can make the Junimos change color. Tip number 10. Once again a new feature of 1.5, fish tanks. They're super cool and can have so much variety. You can place them at walls or use them to create spaces and you can put in a different amount of fish and decorations into every type of fish tank. I prefer to always put in a stone, seaweed, a coral and a sea urchin. And depending on the theme you're going for, you can use fitting fish and even put a fitting hat on sea urchins as well. But you can be as creative as you want with these. Just check the wiki if you want to see what you can put in. Number 11. Use some variety of crops, including giant crops, just as a decoration next to sheds or other buildings. Just remember that you can still keep your big field of ancient fruits for profit somewhere else on your farm. Regarding giant crops, there are three types of crops that can become giant and every 3x3 square of these crops has a 1% chance of becoming a giant crop overnight if it's fully grown and watered. This also counts overlapping tiles for an even bigger chance. This still might take a while, but I think it's worth the effort because they'll stay there forever. I generally really like to place them in triangles, around Junima huts, or next to pathways. Or just build around where they happen to spawn. Tip number 12. Let's finish this off with some extremely specific but cool tricks. First trick, a single row straw floor won't have straw on it, in case you want to use another color of pathing to surround a building or so. Second trick, even though they will get obstructed, putting windows behind huge furniture like fish tanks or the big trees from the movie feature can create a cool lighting effect during the day. And my last trick, 
You can put torches behind fish tanks or other furniture, for example the tree of the winter star. This will give them a nice glow, especially during the night. And that's it for this video. Subscribe, like the video and join my new discord server if you like. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video.